With the blow of a whistle, five drummers, two flutists, six horns, and a cymbalist march into history. Ladies and gentlemen, the marching band. Franklin Pierce University's first ever marching band. They played so well. I'm so pleased, and um, they, they've been working hard, and they seem to be having fun, and it's, it's all I could ask for, so I'm over the moon. Director George Robinson calls the inaugural band small but mighty. We still are going to make noise and, and play our music loud and, and with enthusiasm. As you can probably tell by the non-traditional uniforms, this band marches to the beat of its own drum. I'll join if we don't have to wear those like funny, silly uniforms. Angela DeGrazia, a senior, never even picked up an instrument until now. I don't know how to play anything, don't know how to read music. Didn't matter, George and company taught Angela the cymbals. The symbols, they're, they're just there to like hold the beat pretty much. The other band members are proficient musicians. <laughs> Junior Ben Maddy transferred to Franklin Pierce specifically to be in the band. I'm honestly just like really happy to be one of the first, like the, the very first um, marching band, like snare drum player, like it's just an honor, honestly. The idea of creating a marching band at this small liberal arts university percolated back in 2019 when the Ravens started a football team. Initially, the school formed a pep band, but a marching band was always the goal. In early 2022, recruitment started with an eye on a fall debut. In our NCAA Division II conference, we have um, 10 schools, we're in the NE10 division. And of those 10 schools, we are only the second one that has a marching band. Junior Olivia Lavoy was the first person to sign up. I saw the post and I jumped out of my seat. I texted my parents in all caps, like they have a marching band, they're doing a marching band. As drum major, Olivia leads the band and sets the tempo. Size, she says, makes little difference. If we put our hearts into it, you're gonna pump up any game no matter how big or small you are. George strategically works around any lack of instruments. We don't need a bass player necessarily because we have our sousaphone, the, the big giant horn that wraps around you. He plays all the low notes, him and the baritone, uh, baritone saxophonist. The halftime routine, all seven minutes, orchestrated by George. He writes, he arranges, and he designs the drills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's kind of a one-man band. Many of the other big schools have whole marching band staffs. They have a director, they might have somebody that works specifically with the horns, and at least one person that works specifically with the drummers. And one, two, three, four. Also non-traditional, the song selection, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, and Billie Eilish. But he arranged them like for every different section, which is mind-blowing, like I can't imagine taking the time to do that, that'd be, that'd be so difficult. During the games, you'll hear the band in the stands, the national anthem. And a fan favorite. Rehearsed over and over again during band camp. The marching band gives football games a renewed shot of energy. It's awesome. Uh, I heard people talking about how much of a, a difference it makes in the environment and the atmosphere. Second and six at the 29. Excitement shared by this pioneering band. I'm still blown away. I just, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just happy. More than the fun, it was like just a really a moment of pride. 
While George hopes to attract more musicians to their ranks, he's perfectly content with the sounds of his mighty marching band. It's surreal. It's one of those things that you just sort of thought would never come. It's just too good to be true. And it's happening. Thank you.